I think diagnostic radiographers and radiation therapists are not well represented in the media. For example, in the movies or TV shows, you will see a doctor or a nurse sitting behind a computer in a control room doing CT scan and radiation treatment on patients. However, in reality, only qualified and trained persons can perform these clinical procedures, and they are the diagnostic radiographers and radiation therapists. So how much do you know about diagnostic radiography, or in short, DR, and radiation therapy, or in short, RT? I think you all know that diagnostic radiographer is the key person who is qualified and trained to operate a wide variety of sophisticated medical equipment and assist doctors to find out what is going wrong in your body. Indeed, a diagnostic radiographer is a photographer who uses radiation. And that's why we are diagnostic radiographers. Whereas a radiologist is a doctor who makes the clinical diagnosis on the image. They have to go to medical school, spend years of training in order to become specialized in image interpretation. So diagnostic radiographers cannot become a radiologist without going through the same process that is going to a medical school. This is also true for radiation therapists. Let me tell you a secret. If you want to become a doctor, but in the end you couldn't get into the medical school because of the score or whatever reasons, and you choose DR and RT as your second best, I think that's absolutely okay. Indeed, there are many of us actually get into the DR and RT industries for the same reason. However, you should do a reality check first and find out what are the job scopes for DR and RT before entering the profession. When you look at the Allied Health Profession Council website, you will find out that both DR and RT professions are required to obtain a practicing license from the Allied Health Profession Council before we can practice in Singapore. Some people may think that DR and RT are coming from the same profession. This is not true. In fact, a DR practitioner cannot practice in RT and vice versa. The major difference between the job scope of DR and RT is that for diagnostic radiographers, they use medical equipment with low level of radiation or even without radiation to produce diagnostic images. This includes X-rays, CT, ultrasound, MRI, angiography, fluoroscopy, etc. Whereas for radiation therapists, they use high dose of ionizing radiation to kill cancers. Sometimes I find that students are hesitant to join our program. This is because they know both DR and RT are working with radiation. And I can understand their worry because radiation to most people is equal to something that can kill life. Therefore, in our DR and RT programs, students are required to learn the proper ways to protect themselves and of course, to protect the patients from any unnecessary radiation. In our daily practice, we need to comply with the principle called allower, as low as reasonably achievable, meaning that we will use the least amount of radiation to produce a diagnostic image. For radiation protection purpose, when a patient is undergoing a radiation examination or treatment, diagnostic radiographers and radiation therapists will be staying in the control room where we are well protected behind the lab walls. We will also wear a personal dose monitoring device to monitor the level of our received radiation dose at the workplace. And if necessary, we will also wear a lab apron to protect ourselves during the procedures. In other words, the chance of receiving unnecessary radiation during our practice is extremely low. In fact, because we are well equipped with the knowledge and understand the ways to achieve proper radiation protections, we are probably the least vulnerable group to unnecessary radiation. Speaking of radiation, 
Some people may think that X-ray will free up the entire examination room when we turn on the X-ray or giving radiation treatment. But the truth is that X-ray is only confined to a certain region. Some people are afraid of radiation, but some people are not. In the past, I received many patients requesting to help them to take more X-rays. In these scenarios, we will refuse their request because by law, we can only follow the X-ray request order that prescribed by the referring doctors only. If the patient really has the need to get an additional X-ray, we will then advise them to consult a doctor first. By the way, do you know diagnostic radiographers also do portable X-ray, meaning that using a mobile X-ray machine to take X-rays? Portable X-ray is a very important image modality, especially during now the COVID time. We do portable X-rays for patients who are very ill or just after a major surgery. Taking a portable X-ray requires good communication skills and good radiographic techniques as well because the patients are usually very ill. The portable X-ray duty is very physical demanding. However, once you can overcome the challenge, the rewards and satisfaction can be out of your imagination. X-rays was discovered in 1895 and we have been using it for medical imaging for many decades. Today, there are many different imaging modalities available for disease diagnosis such as CT, ultrasound, MRI, etc. However, you may wonder why we are still using print X-ray for diagnosis and why it hasn't been phased out. The answer to this question is, print X-ray is frequently used to look at those body parts with high contrast difference in tissue densities, such as in the lung or in the bones. Today, we are still using print X-ray because this is a very simple very fast procedures and very cheap costs. And basically, it can be applied to all body parts from head to toes. The other imaging modality that also uses radiation is CT. Nowadays, CT has been widely used for cancer detection as well as diagnosis of the vessel diseases, especially in the detection of coronary artery disease. When there is a need to look at the soft tissue, Print X-ray or CT may not be the best choice, and therefore MRI may be a better choice. MRI uses high magnetic field and radio frequency pulses to generate images. It has been widely used to examine the body parts, like the joints, the spine, and the brain, where a high soft tissue contrast is required. Apart from having excellent soft tissue contrast, MRI can also suppress the signal from a certain type of tissue, such as the fat tissue. As a result, diagnostic radiographers can selectively enhance those useful signals in the final image by adjusting different examination parameters. We also have ultrasound. The quality of ultrasound image is highly depends on the experience and skills of the sonographer. A unique feature in ultrasound is that the resolution in ultrasound image is far less than those obtained in other image modalities. And this is probably the reason why most people find it difficult to appreciate an ultrasound image. Relatively, there are also more restrictions when using ultrasound to acquire images. For example, ultrasound cannot penetrate through bones and air. It is basically not possible or very difficult to obtain good images when the body parts contain bones or a lot of air. If you have an ultrasound examination before, you may wonder why the sonographer will apply some gel onto your body. Is it for lubrication or the gel is just to improve image contrast? Well, the gel probably can serve as a lubricant. But the main reason for applying ultrasound gel on your body is to provide a coupling medium between the ultrasound probe and your body. As I just mentioned, ultrasound cannot pass through the air, and therefore we need to apply some gel between the ultrasound probe and the surface of your body so that we can get rid of the air interface 
during the ultrasound examination. However, despite these limitations, ultrasound has many advantages over plain X-ray and CT, such as ultrasound has no radiation and can look at the body part in real time. The DR industry is evolving every year. For example, 20 years ago, so look at this picture, I need to develop X-ray films with these chemicals in the dark room. But now we have digital X-ray and the image can be popped up on the screen in seconds. Also, 20 years ago, when I performed a CT brain examination, it could take up, up to five minutes to complete the whole examination. But now it only takes five seconds to acquire all the images. I've been working in the DR profession for more than 25 years, and every day I'm still learning something new. So now you understand in DR, different image modalities have their own advantage and also limitations. And now DR industry is keep evolving. This is why in SIT, we will equip our DR students with the most updated knowledge in all different image modalities. Besides, the, the integrations of knowledge and practice will be reinforced through the real world clinical experience in actual clinical facilities. Therefore, our DR students are required to receive a total of more than 1,000 hours of clinical training. Like the DR profession, there are also myths in the RT professions. For example, patients think that high radiation dose received during radiation therapy will make them become radioactive. This is not true. Receiving radiation treatment doesn't make your body become radioactive, so you won't emit radiation to anyone surrounding you. However, patients on radioactive RD treatment may retain certain amount of radioactive RD in your body. So for safety reasons, they are advised to limit their contact to other, other people for several days. Patients also ask about the side effect of RT, whether it will be the same as chemotherapy. Well, it depends on the type of cancer and the area which is treated with radiation therapies. Sometimes the side effect can be the same as the chemotherapy, but not every time. It seems that the development of RT was a bit behind the development of chemotherapy. For example, we now have target therapy for breast cancer. However, in the recent 20 years, there are many new radiation treatment machines available, such as the cyber knife, intensity modulated radiation therapy, image guide radiation therapy, and tomotherapy. All these new machines can deliver a higher radiation dose to kill cancer accurately, and at the same time, greatly reduce the radiation dose received by the tissue adjacent to the cancer. As radiation therapists, we are responsible to give the right amount of radiation to the patient that prescribed it by the doctors. An analogy of this is that our pharmacists dispensing medicine to patients. To undergo a radiation therapy, the first step would be to see a radiation oncologist, and then followed by simulation, planning, and treatment. Simulation process is a critical preparation step before delivering the radiation. It is because we perform in the simulation room that we are using an equipment with a dedicated CT scanner and during the simulation, the treatment setup will be simulated. The next step after the simulation is the treatment planning process. All the images that we have taken during the simulation process will be sent to this computer for treatment planning. An experienced radiation therapist or the symmetrist will do the planning according to the referring doctor's instructions. And we will work closely with the doctors and medical physicists. Once we have the treatment plan, the final step is to deliver the treatment. 
radiation therapists will work in pairs in the treatment room and we will set up the treatment according to the instructions that's prescribed by the doctors. We need to make sure that everything is meeting what the prescription says as far well as what the treatment plan says. Usually, we will treat the patients five days a week and the patients will come to us for about four to seven weeks. Therefore, to our cancer patients, we are providing a vital role in their life and also contributing to their lives significantly. Most of the time, the doctors and nurses are not in the treatment room with us. So it's our role to make sure that the patients are doing well. As radiation therapists, we need to make sure our patients are eating well and to monitor them for any side effects. If they are having any side effects, we will refer them to the appropriate healthcare professionals. As radiation therapists, we also need to use diagnostic medical equipment in our RT practice. This is because we need to locate the lesions precisely before we can deliver the high radiation dose to kill the cancer. In fact, the integrations of the R technique into our RT practice has a synergetic effect, resulting in a better treatment outcomes and benefits to our patients in SIT our RT students can develop their clinical skills using state-of-the-art equipment and technology in simulated clinical environments. Through lectures, tutorials, laboratory activities, and clinical placements, SIT prepare our RT students to be job ready. Indeed, during their clinical placement, apart from getting hands-on uh, experience, our RT students can also get an opportunity to networking with their potential employer. Now, we understand that both DR and RT are playing a vital role in healthcare. In SIT, our programs will set you up to be more than just a healthcare provider. If you ask me, what are the qualities that good diagnostic radiographers and radiation therapists should possess? I think they are a caring personality, hardworking, good interpersonal and communication skills, compassionate and sensitive to other people's needs, keen to use cutting-edge technologies, and enjoy working in a team. Ask yourself, do you want to grab this opportunity to help more people who are in need? Are you sure you want to be a diagnostic radiographer or a radiation therapist? If your answer is yes, then please adjust your expectation, understand your strength and weakness, set your career goal, and go for it. I look forward to seeing you in the program soon. Thank you.